good. So first thing up, you're going to ask yourself after watching that intro video, does the game really look that good when you're playing it? Answer is yes. It looks amazing. Uh, I'm going to show you just real quick while we can go into it here at this point of the menu system, early access roadmap. Uh, basically, every month, to sum this whole thing up, uh, every month you're going to get a new track and you're going to get a new car all the way up to the final build. Uh, this goes to February 13, 2019 for build 6. Uh, obviously, along the way, they're going to be doing updates as far as fine-tuning things, adding different... Um, different um, parts uh, of the game like say build 2 you know you're gonna have hot stint you have VR support uh, some basic pit stops which actually it said of course the one had a really cool pit stop with the you know the functional guys and stuff so I can't wait to see that actually in action um, you know uh, you can see the rest of it here though but I won't bore you with it too much uh, it's you're basically buy buying a demo right now for 25 bucks I feel it's basically at the demo stage uh, but you know instead of a demo ending and telling you to buy me now you've already bought it so uh, but you're buying it at more than half the cost of what it's going to be now if you're someone that enjoys um, a set of course of one you will love this game and go ahead and save you some money and go ahead and buy it now uh, there are some glitches with it hopefully I will not have any lockups but my glitches after their last patch I uh, had been uh, locking my game up quite a bit. Now, what you see here on this first screen is the menu system. The menu system is actually really nice, uh, really snappy. The game loads up super fast. Think of like Project Cars 2 as far as clicking on stuff and it goes right to it. Um, options just go right to it. Everything is very fast and snappy, uh, which I love. Um, Right now, what you're presented with is special events. You got four special events. Uh, this one, I haven't played the rest of the, of the three. This is the one I did. Uh, but because those are hot stints and hot laps, I wanted to do a race. Uh, this one actually goes from the day to nighttime, so you get to see the whole transition of day to night. Looks beautiful. Uh, no hiccups. Running 60 FPS the whole time. And uh, yeah, just stunning looking, actually. Uh, right now you got of course single player this is where you can set up your your game mode practice your AI strength and stuff like that circuits these are the circuits going to come to it so there's 10 circuits right now all we have is Nurburgring uh, and you can see Zolder, Monza, Brands Hatch, Silverstone, Circuit Paul, Rick, Richard, uh, Mazzano, Spa, uh, hung, Hungering uh, no I just botched that and Barcelona and Nurburgring of course uh, so 10 10 tracks and then I don't know how many cars actually come with it but you know you got the Ferraris and the uh, and obviously the Lambos and, and other cars but all of them are here in the game right now when you play uh, when you race it's not just like you're racing against Lambos uh, so they're all there uh, next one is team you can pick your different teams or the number of the driver you want uh, or the driver rather that you want uh, so that's cool uh, see, I think I like the red one here. I'll pick the red one. I, I'm not partial to any particular one. But that's this is what you're getting in the, of course, the single player mode. Uh, you can also select, you can start your session at any time, right? And that would start it in this game mode right here. Whatever you set in this game mode, start session, boom, there you go. Boom, do you like that, man? I'll tell you what. So let's look at realism here. Uh, this is where you can set it from custom, beginner, rookie, expert, Pro, and then back to custom. So I run custom right now. Uh, tire fuel consumption, I'll leave it on disabled. I actually turned it on and tried out, but I have no way of telling how much gas I have in the car before I start out on the track. So, so I don't know how much fuel to put in the dang thing. So I leave it on disabled because I literally ran out of gas in a 10 minute race. Uh, brake tip temperature, I'll leave it on enabled. Uh, stable. You know, right here to the side, it tells you disabling brake temperature allows the brakes to allow uh, to always, I'm sorry, operate 100% <coughs> efficiency. So uh, I leave it to where I want them to get roasted when they need to get roasted and not when they're not. So uh, I leave it more realistic. Confirm. Now, uh, next, 
is the weather. Now you can see the weather here. You got sunny, cloudy, light rain, medium rain, heavy rain, storm, and dynamic weather. This is going to be the big one. This is like, you know, Project Cars 2, Project Cars 1, dynamic weather. So that's going to be great. Can't wait to that. Uh, comes in effect because you know obviously you're gonna be able to set from say day to night cycles uh, along with uh, dynamic weather along the way so yeah awesome right now uh, I'm gonna burn cloudy in this race uh, rain looks amazing we'll get more into that uh, assist right here so I got you know obviously you have the same things custom pro beginner uh, expert uh, to preset it for you I put it on custom, as you can see. Manual gearbox, clutch automatic. Uh, I mean, it is a GT3 car. Uh, I do wish that on the clutch that you could still kick the clutch with it on automatic and, uh, and bring up revs and stuff like when you spun out or something. But uh, that's maybe that can come in a patch, you know. Uh, engine start on manual. Uh, this was this came on the patch as far as it actually works now. Uh, the engine start was already mapped to one of my uh, buttons automatically, but uh, it wouldn't start because the ignition wasn't turned on. So they mapped it now to uh, where you can map a button to your ignition and another button to your engine start. Wipers, obviously, whatever you want, you know, manual, automatic, lights. Light modes, you got like three of them. You turn them on, turn them off. Uh, and and a, a nice pretty ambient blue lighting inside which uh, from my understanding is actually real uh, they usually turn it on for like when they're in the pits and stuff so they can see the buttons uh, see that uh, they're buckled in and all that pit limiter set it to manuals what I do traction or the stability control leave it off uh, now I've noticed there's a little bit of glitch with this one just to let you know right now it either works at 100% or off. It doesn't matter if you say 30% and hit confirm and go back in it, it defaults to off. But if I go to 100% and hit confirm and go back into it, it stays 100%. So that's a little bit of a glitch there. That's off. Ideal lines off. Uh, you can obviously turn them on if you want to. So let's just jump into a practice session. Uh, real quick and I'll go over the rest of the menu system uh, setting up your graphics card and all that later uh, after the race if you're still interested in knowing that but I'm sure you just want to see what this looks like we are gonna do day night time 1600 hours you know what no we are gonna do pure well, that's on practice okay uh, so here you go you can go quick race practice hot lap hot stint what's the difference hot lap and you got a ghost car stint length okay so just run as fast as you can for a length of time five five minute intervals it looks like all the way up to 60 minutes wow okay uh quick race obviously this is what we want this is where you can pump uh, jump in with the ai and battle it out we're gonna do 3 a.m 10 minute race starting position we're just say 10th Opponent level uh, number 20, which is maxed out. 20 opponents. Put me at two. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, opponent skill 95. Aggressive. Opponent aggressive is 80%. I haven't played with this one too much. Uh, or at all, actually, to see, you know, what's the big difference. What's the lowest setting? Hang on. Let's see what it goes to, guys. The suspense is killing me. Oh, so they can be non-aggressive at all. <laughs> or 100% aggressiveness. Shoot, what was it, 70? Oh, 80, I think is what it was. 80. All right, we'll go back to 80. Uh, hit confirm, and that's what we're going to go into. And we'll hit start session and go at it. Now, if you have, if you're blessed like me, and you actually have next level racing motion simulator, Good news is it works with this game. Uh, and I'll just pull it up here real quick. I actually set it, it actually works with the regular Assetto Corsa um, uh, settings. I just renamed it, cloned one, named it, eight, you know, as you see here, Assetto Corsa CC, or Assetto CC GT3, and adjust these because they're a little bit too intense for this particular car. Uh, but yeah, the tactile is not working yet. I would imagine once uh, they release, Next Level Racing releases a 
an official setup for it, and then you'll get the tactile as well. But it's amazing it works, so love it. I uh, just found it out when I was doing another video of this one just to see. Now, let's go into, before you go into the race, you have set up here. My motion rig's doing a little gyration here. Now, I have no idea which one. If I hit safe, or, or, or yeah, safe setup, this is what it goes into, electronics. Fuel, this is where you, fuel and strategy, this is where you can change your tires from dry to wet. And that's really the only choices right now. Uh, mechanical grip. Uh, of course, is all your downforce and everything, your dampers and your aero. Uh, so all very done up very nicely uh, as far as how it looks. It just looks nice. Uh, so I like that. Definitely welcomed. Uh, but I don't know that, even though I picked it, I don't know that I picked it, right? <laughs> I can hit save, but then it tells me, okay, load or save. And then I can save that setup as a new one with all the changes that I would have wanted, right? Uh, but it still gives me no confirmation in saying this is really what happened. So anyway, that is what it is. I would imagine it's going to improve in the future, but I'm going to click on this load save again. And the first menu that comes up is load. I wish save came up as a default, uh, because a lot of times I'll mess around with it. And then I come over here and think I hit confirm for save and not paying attention that it's on the load screen and it reloads. <laughs> the original setup uh so yeah that's a little aggravating at times but anyway for right now we'll hit load there's nothing that tells me that it actually worked but i just have to trust it trust that it worked okay uh next you can actually adjust your options here too this is actually pretty cool you can't adjust your controls they do need to add that feature i believe in here because sometimes you may not want to use may want to set up a different shifter uh if you want it to uh, but you can adjust your sound and your video settings right here on the fly, live, live, coming to you from New York now, live uh, on the fly. So that's actually pretty cool. And it takes, uh, you know, the action right there. Obviously, uh, assist, you can change on the fly as well. Your HUD, if you want to turn things on and off. I'll leave them all on. Well, the one that was off, right? Circuit map, I'll turn that one off. That one's just, I already know the circuit. Uh, but yeah. Let's jump in the race. I have to start my car. Now my lights default off. Let me flash that guy. That is very vibrant and brilliant looking, right? Turn the lights on. Now sometimes it cuts the ignition out like it just did now. Like it like, hey, you can't get too far ahead. You gotta stay in your certain spot before the race starts. But anyway, the first thing you'll notice, and we'll talk about it, is the graphics. The graphics are amazing. Uh, they look, uh, I mean, just really freaking good. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing to complain about. AI is a little bit to complain about still, but uh, as I get knocked into, but uh, yeah, the graphics look amazing. It is a huge step up from the set of course of one. Uh, the shadows are just beautiful. The lighting effects, I mean, you got the lights blinding you in your rearview mirror up there. Uh, reflection off the track. To me, the only other game that does nighttime correctly would actually be Forza Motorsport 7. Uh, let me turn my traction control up of my cold tires uh, and speaking of traction well I'll get into that later uh, but anyway it, yeah the graphics are nice the shining of the track lighting uh, you know they look a little hazy thank you for that bump um, just like they do in real life you know so pretty cool and if you didn't know this game is actually going to have ray tracing abilities on it with the new GTX 20 or RTX 20 series rather uh, so I have that card coming hopefully it'll be here next week and I can do some extensive testing on it and all my other games by the way if you did not know this this uh, race is uh, brought to you by Fnatic where you you can get you your direct drive wheel your club sport 
V2.5 or any other iteration for Xbox, PlayStation 4, and PC. Links below to help support the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing to click on them, but I get a kickback uh, enabling me to eventually, after thousands of clicks, to buy one. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's move on. So, I like the little arrows to the right, still telling you kind of the same old school stuff, telling you where the other guys are at. I wish they looked a little bit different, like yellow or something, a different color, because honestly, I really don't see red that well. Uh, but yellow, I would notice more so. Oh, no, no, no. See, traction control one right there. That's what I wanted to talk about with traction control. Now, I didn't have no idea why I was going to spin out, because that's a glitch. It automatically switches over to traction control one at times. I'm going along, doing great with my race. And then I spin out like you just saw, and I'm like, what the heck? Why'd that happen? Oh, I see it switched off. So that's a glitch. I'm sure it'll get fixed, obviously. Ooh, look at that sparks coming off that car. Um, but yeah, that is a problem. All right. So you see a lot of, uh, you know, like on, on a set of Corsa, the screen always looked dirty. You still got a little bit of that dirty look on this screen too. Pretty cool. I don't see any like rubber marks coming up like you do in Project Cars 2, uh, hitting it or, you know, rubber balls flying at you or over the top of the car and stuff. That would be a nice addition. Add some realism to it. Oh shit. I think that was just my bad right there. Yellow, yellow flag. Look at that dirt in the rearview mirror. See, you can see the dirt. Uh, as you can see, damage is not on. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that'll be coming in the future. As far as damage goes. But you, this, that leads me up to sound, right? So you hear all the rock pebbles and stuff under the car. Still hear them. And they're finally gone. All right, so they carry with your car for quite a ways, pretty much like a set of course of one did. Uh, but, you know, continue on with the sound. What you hear in the game is really good. Uh, not tinny sounding, not uh, like you're in the hallway. It's very vibrant sounding. Oh, and you got a pit crew guy. All right, you got a crew chief telling you things, which is great. Um, these are all things you expect in a 2018 release, right? Okay, I'll be careful. Thank you, mijo. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the sounds, the in <coughs> engine sounds inside the car, I think sound great. They sound really good on the outside of the car. I think most games on outside of the car. That's, see, that's my fault. Keep downshifting right there. And once you start spinning, it's kind of impossible to, to recover. That's what I notice. Uh, which that will lead into uh, for feedback in the next section of this overview. Uh, but back to sounds. Yeah, it sounds good. Engine sounds great. Uh, if you're sitting on the track and the car comes flying past you, you hear the roar of that engine. It's just very, uh, it's, it's intoxicating. It uh, sounds really good. But uh, yeah, I like the sounds. Definitely an improvement over uh, AC1. Uh, they are, I think they actually sound better than Project Cars 2. Uh, they are very close to... Stop already, come on now. Uh, they are close to uh, race room. I wonder if I change that up. Uh, I have noticed though with the uh, settings as far as uh, traction control and all that, it just kind of changes its mind. It sets whatever it wants. I am sucking at my driving today. Yeah, I just did a video of this too and I wasn't quite happy with it and I drove much better. <laughs> uh, anyway, ooh, look at the sparks. Speaking of graphics, sparks in the rearview mirror. That actually looks badass. Um, so yeah, we already covered graphics, check, sounds, check, got a crew chief, check, 
so far so good. VR coming next month, check. Um, 60 FPS, check. Uh, you can turn the HUDs on and off. Now, I wish you could actually program like Project Cars 2 to turn certain features of the HUD on and off. Um, that would be a nice addition, I think. It's because I may just like, or resize them even for that matter. Get over. Now, when you're in the cockpit of the car, you have this look left, look right. The only view it actually works in is this one and the outside view of the car, third, per, third person view. Uh, but if you switch over to the uh, this view, it doesn't work. Which, you know, you're definitely closer to the action. Maybe I should have turned that AI down because I can't catch him no more. Uh, here's the next view, the helmet cam. I think this view looks the best, but I can't switch back and forth. And speaking of views, I can't look behind me at this point, right? And the mirror's not on anymore either. Um, but I switched back to this view. Oh, look, my blinker's on. <laughs> like I mentioned before, you know, when you go start driving crazy, and if you have something set close, let me click that button off. There it goes. You can turn it off. But, uh, you know, it's easy to turn some of these things on and off, but it is a, a nice feature to be able to do. Need someone, someone to pass. But anyway, rear view for that view works great, right? Uh, does what it, it should do. Looks completely behind you from the front of the car. Uh, this view, nothing. This view, I see the back of my seat. What the hell? <laughs> I don't want to see the back of my seat. Incidentally, though, uh, you will see the seat restraints be moving forward and backwards. Uh, when you're in that view. You know what, speaking of uh, seeing things move, uh, sometimes when you got your wheel turned a certain way, I see it more in the Ferraris and the preview, in the uh, replace, but um, you'll actually see your guy's foot moving from the throttle to the uh, from the throttle to the brake, actually, which is pretty cool. Nice little touch to add that. Uh, I do like the uh, features of your guy reaching to uh, turn things on and off. Like I go to start it, so he goes to start it again. Do not kill your ignition in the middle of the race though, because it takes a little while to start it back. That happened. Where's the rest of Matt? But anyway, uh, let's see. As far as force feedback goes, let's talk about force feedback. The track, you feel all the bumps in the track. You feel the curbing. You feel uh, the weight of the tires moving underneath you. Uh, see, traction control's down to one again for some reason because it hates me. Switched it to eight. Um, through that corner there, I felt all the little bumps and stuff through the steering wheel. Uh, so very nice. Uh, force feedback settings. I think it is uh, on par with AC1, except that it's not as strong. It is definitely weaker than AC1. AC1 is very, let me guess. See, look, traction control one again. I expected it to be on eight. That's a little disappointing, isn't it? So that's that explains why I'm behind so much here. <laughs> can't keep the car under control because the car won't keep the settings I put there. Hopefully ACC will see this video. <laughs> but, uh, or, so to, or 505 games, whatever. But, uh, yeah, the, you feel all the bumps in the track, which is good. They're just not as abrupt. So you actually feel more in your motion rig than you do through the wheel itself. I would imagine with a great drive wheel, uh, you're going to feel the intensity a lot more now those people that have you know a lower end wheel uh, maybe a lower end t300 or races over or you know a logitech or something like that you're gonna feel even less i like the smoke the blue smoke and all that like uh the release of popping firecrackers and stuff that's pretty cool or however they release it uh, there we go comes to a stop Look at that. I'll just turn it around. What you think about that, huh? 
Alrighty. Let's go into uh, the replay and I'll continue talking about this and maybe pointing out some things. Um, look at my cars floating off the ground. What the hell? I ain't geared and ready to go. Look at that. That was not. Just mine. <laughs> Alright, there's a glitch for you. Kunos. Um, let's see what happens, man. I'm just curious. I like the lights on the, on the cars, though. That's pretty cool. Uh, I know that's all like real life stuff, but still, just looks neat to see it in the game. Anyway, uh, force feedback's great. AI is actually vastly improved on, and that's the last thing I'll talk about is AI, uh, over, over the last one. Where the hell is it going to start? Here we go. Uh, AI is vastly improved on. Uh, they do have some spatial awareness, but I did notice that once you get, say, turn one, on this particular track, they all pile up and they don't know what the hell to do. Uh, you know, it's a traffic jam in front of them, right? So then they all stop and react and then it, it backs up everything. But uh, it just is what it is. Like that guy bumped me because he lost a little bit of his traction. That happens, that's racing. Uh, so it didn't knock me off. But uh, for the most part, they're pretty clean. You just have to keep in mind like turn one you know, it's not one in the first lap. So if you kind of hang back or go to the outside and then cut across and let them do what they want to do, um, you're a little bit safer to get through it that way. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as the AI, as far as moving around you, I've noticed they'll, they will move around you. You can stop on the track and they will still pile up behind you. And there'll be a few stragglers that actually will go around you. Uh, so that's, that's still not quite fixed, but you know what? AI has been a problem to every sim racing game out there, and that's the one thing that is continually improved on throughout the uh, the career or the stints of that particular game. So, you know, Kunos knowing what they know so far uh, has definitely improved the uh, AI, and actually it's a very fun game to race uh, right now, especially compared to the AC1. Uh, the guys are a lot more uh, aware, spatial awareness of, of where you're at and stuff. Uh, and then you couple that with the, it's just a, you know, beautiful graphics. Everything looks great. So, also talking about graphics real quick. You know, nighttime looks beautiful. It's the best I've seen besides, say, uh, Forza 7 being graphics. Because when black is black, I want it to be black. Like, if you're on spa in the back session, section where there's no lights, it should be pitch black except for your headlights. Uh, this game, I believe, will do that because right now the uh, darkness looks very, very good. Uh, and the lighting effects uh, with, you know, uh, all the lights around it looks really cool. Uh, rain. Rain actually is, uh, looks good. It's improved upon, uh, well, obviously, AC1 had no rain and day-night changes, right? Uh, but rain in this game to me looks a little bit better than project cars 2 i think project cars 2 is kind of the you know the that's when i switched over to traction control one well i didn't the game did but uh, the um the rain looks a little bit better uh, on this game i think than project cars 2 uh the lighting's different but uh it looks a little bit richer to me uh in, in a set of course of or acc um than two does. Daytime, uh, it's kind of a wash between the daytime of Project Cars 2 and this one. They both look very comparable to me. Uh, no complaints on either one. So, um, yeah, you'd have to just check them out. But if, you, if you're if you looking for the graphics of a, a Project Cars 2 but an Assetto Corsa, you now have it. Which is great. Let me change the camera here. Now, to talk about this beer here, right here. It has a grainy look to it, and I have it on Epic, but it just looks like you're looking through, at times, like, um, um, I don't know, plexiglass or something like that. It just has that knurled look to it, uh, especially during the daytime. But at nighttime, it's not as noticeable. You see it a little bit right there, a lot like pixelation and stuff. Now, I do love that you're actually able to pick up you know, smoke and dust and, and, and all that and sparks from your car. 
uh, in the in the mirror. That's you know, I can live with a little bit of grainy mirror <laughs> uh, or this you know um, fake mirror. You know, uh, you know like that. You know if that's if I'm still picking up all those other features. Now obviously when you get a car that has a real real rear view mirror, we'll see what that looks like uh, as the builds continue. This cockpit here, you can actually change this. There's a setting uh, that you can map to your buttons to change the way it looks, uh, which is pretty cool. Let's change it to other cars, you know? See, this is Ferrari. So yeah, basically right now we just have Ferrari and Lambo out there. No other cars. Oh no, there's an Audi out there. But yeah, as you can see, everything works pretty good. This guy actually has a rear view mirror in his car, which is pretty cool. Let me see if I can change this camera. Ooh, that looks better. Look at that. And you can see his foot action down there too as well when the wheel's cocked over in helmet cam view. But uh, yeah, you know what I like about the nighttime too is that it, your car's not washed out like it is in Project Cars 2. Uh, from the lights behind you, your whole car's not lit up. It, it seems like it's it's uh, environment based. You know, as you pass the the lights out on the track, they light up your car like they're supposed to. Uh, the lights in your rearview rear view mirror are just blinding you in the rearview mirror like it's supposed to. Uh, but it's not lighting up your cockpit. You know, because on this Lambo, you got this big old ass on you that kind of blocks some of the light anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, definitely, definitely like that. Reflections are, are just beautiful in this game. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this part of it. I will go over the menu systems here next. Uh, not to try to make this too long, but everything so far is amazing. Alright, let's quit that. Alrighty, options, here's your options. Video, I'll go through this all pretty fast. It's very straightforward. It automatically recognized what I was running, 3440 by 1440 monitor. I leave everything on epic and I'm still getting 60 FPS. Resolution scale, this is one that is, if you turn it up, I think this is gonna be more for VR uh, use. Uh, it goes up, I think, to 200. Um, yeah, 200 is what it goes to. Uh, but Right now at 100, uh, it works fine. If I pump it up to like 150, I drop in the 40 FPS range. And now I'm running a 1080 Ti. Uh, so yeah, it's it'll get uh, taxed pretty good, uh, anything over 100. Uh, view distance, epic. Shadows, epic. Uh, this is going to be another one for uh, VR that you're going to want to play with. Maybe go down to uh, low or medium. But right now, on a 2D screen, epic. Anti aliasing epic. You got high mid off. Uh, that'll be another one to adjust for VR. Anti aliasing type is temporal or FXAA. I don't care for FXAA as much because it look, makes the corners of the pixels look a little blurry. Uh, so I like temporal. Uh, seems to look nice and crisp to me. Effects. That's like you know your uh, your smoke effects, your your spark effects, and stuff like that. On post processing on epic, uh, what do we got? High, mid, low, and epic. So, foliage, all your trees and grass out there, right? Uh, this is probably one I'm going to turn down on VR, uh, probably the low, uh, and see what it looks like. Textures, this will be one that you leave cranked up all the time because all the graphics are hard to do great on textures. Uh, frame limit, I'll probably turn this down to like 92 in VR. But right now I'll leave it at 105 because this particular screen I'm using, the Predator uh, X34 is capped at 100 FPS anyways, 100 hertz. Mirror quality, epic. Uh, I didn't notice a big difference between high and, and epic, honestly. So, uh, and Actually, I put all these on high as well and check my frame rate and it's still running 60 FPS. So uh, didn't really notice any visual difference, but I just pumped it up to the highest one because we're still getting 60. Opponent visibility. This is probably going to be, I have it on all 60. Wow. Is that a distance or is that the cars? I um, wonder. Does it say to the side here? 
No. Who knows what does it do? Uh, just games like R Factor 2 and, and iRacing, this generally means how many cars are visible on the track, but you know, you're only got like 20 cars uh, on a track, so I don't know what the 60 is for. Um, but yeah, we'll see. This would probably be one you'll want to adjust. Motion blur, I leave it off, don't care for it. Saturation 100 and goes to 120. Uh, I didn't notice the difference between the two, so I'll leave it at 100. Hit apply. And it is it did apply, even though you don't know if it did or not. But sound, uh, this is all your, 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 I had to put it on one just so you can hear me talking over the, over the game. Uh, but yeah, you can adjust all your sound, your music menu, your radio comms, damage and all that. I would imagine damage, uh, visual damage is going to come in the future builds. It's not there just yet. Controls, uh, this one's cool. It actually detected everything that I had plugged in. My sequential, Husenfeld sequential shifter, my Fnatic base, the DSD uh, button boxes, uh, HSM pedals. I'm actually running Fnatic uh, V3s, but this is recognized as my handbrake. So yeah, it recognized everything, even though this particular car doesn't have a handbrake. I don't even know if any other cars have a handbrake on it, but it recognized it. Uh, force feedback, I keep it on 90. Uh, I wouldn't go over 100. You feel more details. Anywhere from 80 to 100, you feel the details. And it's a good compromise between feeling enough details in your wheel and um, um, strength in your wheel at the same time. It would be nice if you could uh, adjust it on the fly, like in Project Cars 2, your gain and stuff right here on like a toggle. That would be a really cool addition to add. Uh, minimum force, I'll leave it at zero. I haven't played with it, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, that would be your minimum force uh, that she would have output it. Uh, so, and see, advanced settings, normal, 900 degrees, unless you have like a T500, you'd put it at a 1050. Brake gamma, if you're running load cell pedals, leave it at one. If you're running pitchometer pedals, adjust it to your liking. All right, so that's under the drive setting. And then you got view setting. Oh, go back to drive. And it, autom it automatically recognized all these based on my wheel rim. And it assigned it automatically. So it was easy peasy. Uh, the only thing I changed was the cycle camera to where I wanted it. Uh, going on, look left, look right. I adjusted those where I want it. Look mirror does not seem to work with the Lambo. But it may simply because I ha don't have a rear view mirror to look at. Uh, so that may be just, you know, when you have other cars that have rear view mirrors. Or like the cam mirror that's in the Ferrari, you look at it and direct your head to look at that. I don't know. We'll see it in future builds. Uh, lighting system, enable flashing lights. So, you know, that's when you're high brighten them. Uh, cycle stages, as you saw out on track, you got off, on, and and the pretty blue ambient lighting. And then enable the rain light is the, is the light in the back of the car uh, in the center to help people see you. Not really a big deal with AI, but uh, with online racing with real people, this will be a nice addition. Uh, left directional light, you know, like I was saying, this is kind of the pass left or pass right. That'll be nice as well uh, to use with uh, when you're racing real people. Pit lane. This one actually was new with the patch. It automatically uh, mapped to my up toggle on my McLaren GT3 wheel as the starter, but I couldn't literally start the car uh, when I had it on manual start because I didn't have an ignition to turn on first. So now they mapped the ignition, uh, you know, made it mappable. I'm sure there was a keyboard shortcut, but you know, they didn't release any information on that that I saw within the game. They may have it on their form, but you know, honestly, you shouldn't have to check the form for these things. It should all be here in the game. Uh, so yeah. Pit limiter, that was already there. I just moved over to this pit lane um, menu system here. Uh, that's actually pretty cool, works great. Electronics, you got your cycle, your wipers, increase, decrease traction control, ABS. Display page, don't know what it does. I have it mapped, but I hadn't seen it do anything. Uh, brake bias and engine mapping. That all works perfectly fine. Now this menu here, user interface four, backwards, up, down, left, right, cycle, right, cycle, left, and pause. The only one I noticed that works is pause. So the other ones, I don't know what they do. I thought this was going to be field of view, and I would be able to adjust my field of view in and out of the car. 
Maybe it will work in later builds, but currently right now it does not seem to do anything. So go on to advanced, shift special button. If anybody knows what this does, please let me know. Don't know what it does. I haven't found a, a, a um, I hadn't found out what it does yet. So anyway, that is the menu system here uh, for this set of course uh, competition. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the game. I'm really enjoying it. And now that I accidentally found out that it works with motion <laughs> uh, while trying to do this review, uh, I'm even happier. So I'm uh, sorry this review didn't come as quickly, but I had so many issues with this game not locking up on me uh, the first uh, three days that it was out. I just simply couldn't make a video. Every time I made one, the game would lock up and crash out on me. So, uh, so yeah, it is what it is. It's out now. All right, we'll catch you next time. Leave comments on what you like about the game uh, and what you may want to see as features and stuff. So, yeah, we'll see you later. I'm out.